Assalamu alaikum my dear students hope all of you are fine today we will learn about clavicle so let's start clavicle the word clavicle coming from the latin word means key it is called collar bone in case of male and in case of female it is called a beauty bone the bone has got a s shape curved it is located horizontally on the anterior aspect of the body at the junction of the root of the neck and the trunk the morphological type of the clavicle is a long bone we know the long bone has got two end like this it has got a medial or sternal end and lateral or acromial end and also a shaft so like a long bone it has got two end and a shaft so we know there are three types of long bone one is typical long bone miniature long bone and modified long bone so clavicle is the only example of a modified long bone it is a modified long bone because it is the only long bone which lies horizontally and unlike the typical long bone it has got two primary ossification center in case of typical long bone there will be one primary ossification center and two secondary ossification center but in case of clavicle there will be two primary ossification center and also it is the only long bone that ossifies in the membrane except for its medial end which ossifies in cartilage so the way of ossification is membrane or cartilaginous in case of a clavicle but in case of typical long bone they ossify in the cartilage we will find medullary cavity in case of a typical long bone but in case of clavicle as it is a modified long bone it has no medullary cavity so these are the different reasons why this bone is called a modified long bone the clavicle transmits the weight from the upper limb to the axial skeleton like sternum and also it provides an area for the attachment of muscles and it acts as a strut for holding the upper limb far from the trunk so that it can move freely which allows free swing of the upper limb we have to know about the different peculiarities about the clavicle the first one it is the only long bone which lies horizontally in all of the remaining long bones will lie vertically but the clavicle is the only long bone which lies horizontally it has no medullary cavity as i have mentioned earlier it is subcutaneous throughout its extent and it is the first bone to start ossify between fifth and sixth week of intrauterine life and it is the last bone to complete its ossification around 25th year it is the only long bone that ossifies by two primary center it is the only long bone that ossifies in the membrane except its medial end which ossifies in cartilage the clavicle consists of three parts it has got two ends the medial end and acromial end the medial end or sternal end and the lateral end or acromial end and the shaft the medial end is enlarged and quadrilateral it articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni as you know this is the manubrium sterni and this is the clavicular notch of the manubrium sterni so this will articulate like this so this is the sterno clavicular joint which is saddle variety of synovial joint because the sternal or medial end of the clavicle is saddle shape the acromial end is flattened and it will articulate with the acromion process of the scapula this is the acromion process of scapula the lateral end of the clavicle articulates with the acromion process of the scapula like this and forms the acromioclavicular joint which is plain variety of synovial joint and this is the shaft of the clavicle the shaft has got medial two third and lateral one third the junction between medial two third of the shaft and lateral one third is the most vulnerable point for fracture because this is the 
junction between two curvature and this is the weakest point as there is no muscular attachment there will be muscular attachment to the right and left of this junction and clavicle is one of the mo most commonly fractured bone in the body after fracture of clavicle the medial portion will be pulled up by the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid and the lateral end will be drawn medially by shoulder adductor called teres major after holding the bone in anatomical position like this you have to say this is the clavicle of right side the flattened acromial end lies laterally the enlarged rounded sternal end lies medially the medial two third of the shaft is convex forward and the lateral one third of the shaft is concave forward and medial third of the inferior surface bears a groove where the subclavius muscle got inserted so these are the anatomical points regarding the clavicle medial two third of the shaft has got superior surface anterior surface posterior surface and inferior surface and the lateral one third of the shaft has got a anterior border and posterior border two surfaces superior surface and inferior surface as the lateral one third is flattened the anterior surface of the medial two third of the shaft gives origin to the pectoralis major and the superior surface of the medial two third of the shaft gives origin to the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid as you know the sternocleidomastoid has got two head one is clavicular head one is sternal head by hearing the name sternocleidomastoid you can assume the attachment will be in the sternum sterno clido means clavicle and mastoid means mastoid process of the temporal bone the anterior border of the lateral one third of the shaft gives origin to the deltoid muscle and the posterior border there is insertion of trapezius muscle here at the lateral one third of the shaft of the clavicle this is the inferior surface of the clavicle at the middle third of the inferior surface there is a presence of there is a presence of groove this groove is for insertion of subclavius muscle and the lips of the groove there is attachment of clavipectoral fascia the lateral one third of the inferior surface is rough and bears a conoid tubercle so this is the conoid tubercle and there is trapezoid ridge the tubercle lying close to the posterior border and it gives attachment to the conoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament and trapezoid line it is an oblique rough ridge which runs forward and laterally from the tubercle to near the acromial end and it gives attachment to the trapezoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament so now we know that the rough lateral part of the inferior surface gives attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament and this coracoclavicular ligament plays an important role for the transmission of weight from the upper limb to the sternum the medial end of the inferior surface has a rough depressed oval area near the sternal end its margins gives attachment to the costoclavicular ligament so this one is for costoclavicular ligament as you can see here a nutrient foramen which is directed laterally which means the medial end of the bone is the growing end the medial or sternal end of the bone is the growing end the nutrient artery is derived from suprascapular artery this is the sternoclavicular joint as the medial or sternal end of the clavicle articulates with the clavicular notch of the sternum so here there will be articulation of another clavicle clavicle of left side and there will be ligament which connecting both the clavicle called interclavicular ligament so the junction of the medial two third and lateral one third is the most common site of fracture of the clavicle because of change in curvature of the bone and transmission of weight of the upper limb to the clavicle through 
coraco clavicular ligament at this site. The fracture will result in drooping of the shoulder. This bone is called collar bone in case of male and called beauty bone in case of female. The clavicle is absent in case of animals in which the upper limbs are used only for walking and weight transmission and not for grasping such as horse. So there are some congenital anomalies regarding the clavicle. The first one is clavicular dysostosis. It is a clinical condition in which the medial and lateral part of the clavicle remains separate due to non-union of two primary centers of the ossification. As we have learned earlier that the clavicle ossifies from two primary ossification centers. So, if the fusion between two primary ossification centers is not completed, then the clavicle remains sep separate due to non-union of these two primary centers. This will give rise to clavicular dysostosis. And there is another term called cleidocranial dysostosis. It is a clinical condition characterized by partial or complete absence of clavicle associated with the defective ossification of the skull bones. As the name is cleidocranial dysostosis, so there will be involvement of also the cranial bones here. And there will be partial or complete absence of the clavicle and also associated with the defective ossification of the skull bones. So this was about the congenital anomalies regarding the clavicle. The clavicle has got two primary ossification center. One is at the medial end and one is at the lateral end of the shaft, which appears during fifth or sixth week of intrauterine life and fuses during 45th day of intrauterine life. And it has got a secondary ossification center at the sternal end and also one at the acromial end occasionally. The ossification of the clavicle is membranocartilaginous. Whole of it ossifies in the membrane except the medial end that ossifies in the cartilage. I have mentioned earlier that the sternal end or medial end of the clavicle is the growing end because the epiphysis at this end appears at the age of 19 to 20 years and unites with the shaft at the age of 25 years. It is the last of all the epiphysis in the body to fuse with the shaft. So this is the sternal or medial end, this is the acromial or lateral end. This is the shaft, this one is the medial two third of the shaft and this one is the lateral one third of the shaft. The medial two third of the shaft has got superior surface, anterior surface, posterior surface and inferior surface. And the lateral one third of the shaft has got anterior border, posterior border, superior surface and inferior surface. The medial end enlarged quadrilateral sternal end articulates with the clavicular notch of the sternum and form the sternoclavicular joint. As the sternal end is saddle shape, the type of the joint is saddle variety of sternal joint. And the lateral flattened acromial end articulates with the acromion process of the scapula and forms the acromioclavicular joint which is plain variety of sinovel joint. So this was all about regarding clavicle. I hope this video will help you in your study. Please let me know about the feedback of the class. Inshallah we will meet you with another new one. Until now take care. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.